Hey guys, welcome back to A Guide to Making Indie Games, where each week I share a bit of what I'm working on, as well as teaching you everything you should know about designing your own indie games. Today, I want to show you how I make isometric tile sets for my game Reality Box. We've talked about tile sets a bunch before, but let's do a quick recap so we're all on the same page here. Tile sets are basically the puzzle pieces of level design. Making art for levels is very time consuming, so instead of drawing everything individually by hand, having a palette full of versatile level pieces is a great way to speed up the process of making levels. Previously, we made a tile set for a platformer where each tile represents a piece of the floor or walls or background elements, but today we're taking these things a step further with isometric tiles. Now, a lot of those lessons from the first tile set we made will still apply here, so I highly recommend checking out that video first, but with a new perspective and art style comes a lot of new rules. It's one thing to draw a two-dimensional world, but turning those drawings into something that resembles 3D is pretty tricky. Don't worry though, after today's video I feel confident that you'll have everything you need to know before you dive into making your own isometric style game. But first, hey, I'm Apox Fox and I make game design related videos every week. If you learned something new in this video and want to see more, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. So first and foremost, if we want to make an isometric style game, we have to understand what that actually means. Isometric is a camera perspective that allows you to create seemingly 3D objects in a 2D space without a vanishing point. What this means is that no matter where the camera is positioned, all isometric tiles and objects will always look exactly the same. It's basically forced 3D in a 2D space. Every art style has its own strengths and weaknesses, so let's figure out if isometric is right for you. Starting with the strengths, isometric is perfect for grid-based games. If you're making a tactics RPG like myself, or maybe a puzzle game, isometric has pretty much everything you'll need. However, the same could be said for standard top-down perspective, which is something to consider, but it's kind of undeniable how cool it is to see 3D objects represented in 2D, so for me, that's the main deciding factor. Now time for some of the drawbacks, and these are things you might not have even considered before starting an isometric project. First of all, player movement can end up being very restrictive if you're not making a grid-based game. If all the tiles are diagonal from each other, chances are the player is also moving diagonally which is very weird to control with arrow keys or a d-pad. Of course, there are workarounds for this problem. We've seen it done for games like Hades or Tunic, but that calls for either 3D character models or drawing eight different directions for the character to move. And I feel like I don't need to explain to you why that's still kind of a challenge to pull off. Not only is the art style very restrictive for action games, but it's also just harder to make in general. Like how can you layer 2D blocks behind each other? How can you set the correct pivot points so objects and characters on top of blocks render correctly. I'll show you more of what I mean when we start actually making the tiles, but it's good to fully understand what you're getting yourself into. Either way, I find isometric tiles really fun to make, so let's just start making them. We're going to start by making a standard block tile. Every block tile is made up of three evenly sized diamonds, two for the sides, and one for the top. The top diamond is what's most important here. That's where the player will stand, and when we start layering those tiles together, the top diamond is pretty much all that's left over. Now I'll show you how to make these blocks. The most important thing I can teach right out of the gate is what I like to call the isometric rule of two. Everything we do going forward will be based on this rule, so I hope you're paying attention. To make a perfect cube in pixel art, we start by drawing lines like this. Two pixels, then two pixels, then two pixels then two pixels, you get the idea. This line is what we use to create not only the diamond surface of a block, but also the base at the bottom. Then we have the vertical lines, which close off the block, and there you go. The best way to think about these two different kinds of lines is that two by two lines are for flat surfaces, and the vertical lines represent heights. The reason we don't use straight horizontal lines of ones or lines of three pixels is because the diamonds don't end up being the same size, which is fine, but it's not exactly isometric. But there you go, if you draw each line like this, you end up with a 32 by 32 pixel isometric cube. 
What I like to do before anything else is define a light source for the block. This is really simple. As you can see, I decided the light source would be in the top left. So we use the brightest color for the top, a slightly darker color for the left side, and an even darker shade for the right. After that, you can add some shading and highlights to the outlines, and you pretty much have a working tile set already. It might be a little basic looking, but this is really all you need to start building levels. Normally, we would make the levels in a game engine that aligns everything for you, but for the sake of this video, I'm just copy and pasting more blocks. You also notice that when we layer blocks together, we still maintain that rule of two, and this is essential for making a grid. Staying consistent with this rule of two by two is probably the most important part of isometric tile sets. If a single block is one pixel off, it will ruin the grid entirely. Now that we have one tile done, we can start making variations. I started with a half slab, which is literally just half as many vertical pixels high as a full block. You can also make slope tiles, and these can be a bit inconsistent with how they slope, but as long as the base is the same dimensions as a regular tile, that still shouldn't be a problem. Using all the same rules we went over before, vertical lines being height and diagonal lines being the block surface, you can make a ton of these variations, and having options like this will make your levels a lot more versatile. I threw together this small test object just to show you how all these tiles work together. The main idea here is literally just to follow your guidelines and continue the 2x2 two two pattern. You can stack blocks by placing the base directly on the tile lines, and it's important to note one of the biggest challenges of making isometric art, which is layering. If you want tiles to not become a jumbled mess, you have to start in the back and work your way forward. You gotta remember that these actually aren't 3D objects, these are 2D drawings, so if you want to add something, you have to draw on top of it. That's why pretty much all isometric games make their levels raise towards the back and slope down to the front. It makes layering this stuff way easier later down the road. I have to mention again that this isn't really a problem if you're making a level with game engine tools, but if you're just drawing isometric for fun, it's just something to think about. So now that you know how to make the very basics of an isometric tile set, the only thing we're missing is detail. Right now you're watching a time lapse of me making my own tile set, but I'll explain how I make those details as we go. I decided I wanted to make a sewer dungeon scene, so I just started with some basic floor tiles to build off of. You'll notice that when I detail lines on top of the block, everything is that same 2x2 two two pattern. Like I said before, making isometric tile sets is really all about following that pattern through everything you do. It's either 2x2 two two lines or vertical lines to show height. I know I sound like a broken record, but it really is the most important part of all of this. There actually are some exceptions to this though. You'll see I drew a circle-ish shape on one of the tiles. Curved lines are very weird to pull off in this perspective. I personally just eyeball it until it looks okay. I did some more curved lines later, so you'll see those on the walls for like door frames and stuff like that. But yeah, similar to what we were doing before, I'm just doing a whole bunch of shapes that we can use as building blocks to put the scene together. And now that it's time to start actually building the scene, I'm going to say this again. It's so important to find your guidelines in order to make sure everything lines up correctly. There were multiple times while making the scene where I had to redo a big chunk of it because things didn't actually line up correctly. And you'd be surprised how much one picture can change. One thing that definitely helps me is separating the scene by different layers. I had one layer for the back left side, another layer for the water, and a layer for the bricks in front of the water. You get the idea. Similar to the platformer tile set I made, contrast helps a lot when separating elements of the scene. Although the floors and walls are using the same gray color palette, I went a few shades darker for the walls just to make sure it's easy to separate them. And because I know this is a grid-based game, having a very bright Right, clear floor will be pretty important later down the line. I'll just remind you that game engines usually have tools that make isometric tile sets really easy to use. If you're making a game, don't do it the way I'm doing it right now within your pixel art software because you're just gonna end up with a headache and wasting a lot of time. I just wanted to show you how it works and it's actually kind of a good way to test out your tile sets before putting them into your game. But yeah, here's the finished scene using the tile set I made. Isometric can be pretty fun, especially if you played a lot with Legos as a kid. It definitely scratches the same part of your brain. I hope this helped you guys get started on your own isometric tile sets. Leave a like or a comment to let me know. Subscribe to the channel for a new game design related video every week. Next time, 
we're probably going to start turning Reality Box into a working tactics game, so stay tuned for that. You should also join our Discord server with a ton of other cool developers sharing their own art and games. We'd love to have you. And that's it. See you later, guys. Peace.